All right, guys. Um, so today's topic is uh, titled The Big Picture uh, of the Business. And it's something that just telling a story of, of my journey in the beginning of my journey in, in business, I would say the first like eight to 10 years of our business was strictly built off of hustle, make a lot of calls, do a lot of sales, go in there, getting really good at the sales part of the business, which is definitely important. But the mindset shift for us came when we got into coaching and it started exposing us to really the big picture and how all the different pieces of the business fit together and what the long-term game plan was. And I think that's an area that I wish if I can go back, I would have focused on a lot sooner, but I didn't have the coaching, the mentoring. I wasn't involved with coaching. Uh, a lot of our success early on was self-taught, right? It was, I know how to talk to people, go in there, work really hard, hustle, which is needed, which is great. You got to work really hard, but without the proper mindset or the proper business strategy or just understanding the big picture, um, it something where you can stay in just being a hustler for a really long time and you never actually get out of that rat race, the transaction rat race, which you guys, uh, depending on where you're at in your career, you will start to see, right? There gets to a point where it's like, all right, just how many deals can I close? How many deals can I close? How many deals can I close? I closed this many last year. I want to close more this year, right? It becomes that transaction treadmill, basically, where you're just constantly trying to close transactions. And the question we have to start asking ourselves as we develop and mature in our business is how do I continue to close transactions, but build something that has layers to it where there's things that work for me and it's not just me doing all the work. Um, and how do I eventually retire from this or build something that, you know, brings an income without me, right? That's something that we got to ask ourselves because, I mean, you'll see it now. You'll see people in their 50, 60, 70 still hosting open houses, right? Still out there trying to close deals. Even some of these superstars that you guys follow, uh, these big names, I'm not going to mention any names, but some of these big names that you see are top producers. A lot of these guys, they have to keep closing deal after deal after deal to survive, right? And you, us, we idolize some of these guys like, oh, these guys are doing big numbers. But it's because some of these guys aren't looking at the game like this, right? They're not looking, they're just in the close deals, close deals, and they go through their whole entire career like that. Um, so I'm here to tell you that that's not the only way to do it, right? I'm here to tell you that there is a different way, but it does require focus. It does require understanding the big picture. And it does require little by little working on some of these things and implementing them into your business over time. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, and that light bulb went off for me probably when we first, probably after I had my, my, my daughter, uh, Mila, she's nine now, that light bulb started going off, right? Because that was nine years ago. Uh, I'm going on almost 20 years in the business. So that was like the middle of my career, right? 10 years in. It was like, damn, do I want to keep grinding forever? Do I want to keep just freaking selling hella houses forever, right? Or do I want to start building something that works without me or where I can pick and choose which part of the business I want to operate, right? So the reason this is called, this session is a higher level or producers only is because if I were to tell that to some of these brand new guys who are still trying to figure out how to close their first deal or how to book an appointment or how to write a contract, it's like it's over their head, right? Way over their head. But you guys have been, you know, you guys have closed some deals, right? At different levels. And some of you guys may be even experiencing some of that pain now because you close so many deals and you're like, after a while, you get kind of numb to the, the closing the deals, right? Um, does it mean that I don't want to keep selling real estate? Like I want to sell a thousand homes, right? But do I want to be the one selling a thousand homes or do I want to be the one on every single console, every single appointment, or do I want to be like putting in 12 hours a day for the rest of my life? I don't think that's the life that everyone wants to have, right? Because you get burnt out, you start sacrificing other parts of your life, your health, your relationships, you know, your mental well-being, all these different things. So um, that's the point of this today, right? And I need to I need to spend time on that because if I don't, then it's like, all right, well, what is why is this important, right? Um, okay. So I'm gonna go through a little uh, just a little worksheet, 
when I put some of this together. Uh, let me pull this up. It's all right, I'm gonna read off of it. Uh, <laughs> can't, can't see that far. <laughs> so the big picture, thinking big picture, right? I talked about like where I would hope you would wanna be eventually, right? But there needs to be a path to get there, right? So the big picture of the business, when you start looking at your business as a big picture and you start thinking this way, it's gonna help you answer some of these questions, right? And these are the questions that throughout my career I would get stuck on. Um, but when I started using this strategy, it became clear on direction and stuff like that. So number one question, what should I be working on right now in my business, right? And I want you guys to think of these things. If you have notes, feel free to take notes, right? Because this is a good time to reflect. Um, what should I be working on in my business? What should I focus on in my business? Because sometimes we get to a point where, yeah, I'm closing deals. Like, it's cool. Like, I know how to come in here. I know how to write a contract. I know how to close a deal. I know, that, I know how to, you know, book an appointment. I know how to do the whole process. But if I want to grow, like, where do I start? Where, you know, what's the next level? What do I got to focus on, right? And that becomes a challenging question because there's so many different things you can do and there's so many different things you see out there, right? Um, what is working for me, right? What is working for me? What is not working for me? What should I go all in on, right? What should I stop doing? Because sometimes we may be doing things that aren't serving the big picture. They're not in alignment with where I wanna be in five years or 10 years, right? And we think that it's important now and we're putting a lot of effort, but if we know like this is a long game, right? You could be going in a whole different direction that's taking you off track to your ultimate goal and destination. So what should I stop doing? What's next in my growth journey? What's the next level for me? And that can look like a bunch of different things. Do I really have a business? Do I have a business where I'm just like a high paid employee to my business, right? Am I just, you know, a hustler, right? Because of a, the difference between a job and a business, what's the difference between a job and a business? What would you guys say? Working in and working on. Responsibility. Ownership. Ownership, right? Um, something that you can call your own, right? A job is you got to go in, you got to clock in, you got to do a certain set of responsibilities, and then you leave and you get paid a certain paycheck. Some people run their businesses like a job, right? Um, a business is something that will grow over time, right? Like you put effort in now, and it's something that can continue to build beyond just what you could what you can do if you play it the right way, right? Um, it's something that will give you ownership, right? Where eventually if you want to add to your business, sell a part of your business, bring on a partner, something like that, and grow your business, that comes into play. Um, but it's different from a job, right? Um, so that's something we got to think of. Do I really have a business or do I just have a job like where I'm working for leads and I close a deal and I get a check and that's all I'm really doing. That's the most effort I'm getting. I'm, I'm trying to cash my next commission check. That's the job mentality, right? Because that's also like living paycheck to paycheck, right? Uh, and then what do I want in my future? What do I want in my future, right? Where do I want to be in five years, 10 years? Some of us don't even think about that. Some of us are just like trying to close 20 deals or 30 deals this year or 40 deals. But I'm not thinking about like where I want to be in three years, five years. And then do I want to continue to stay on this, right? Um, and then what's... Something I didn't add on there is what's the highest level in this business that I can achieve? And do I want that, right? So these are all questions you got to ask yourself and you got to constantly ask yourself that because if not, then what happens is you go to default mode, which is come in, take leads, you know, do the hustle stuff, work in the business, close deals, cash checks, and then you're, you're on the grind all the time, right? So when you don't think of these things, then you don't take the action and then you go to default, which is like the employee mentality, right? So a lot of this, guys, is mindset shift, right? Mindset shift. Um, I, mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think just to kind of touch on that, for us, the mindset, the, the shift for me 
was when we, we were with Lars and he told me, he said, I'm going to pull you out of production, right? And, and for me, I'm like, you know, being just a competitor, being an athlete, I'm like, no, no, I, I want to be the man. You know, I want, I want to be the one that sells houses or do the mortgages. And I didn't realize that, you know, I, at that point when he said that, I kind of sat back and we flew back and I started thinking about it. And it made sense where, where I could be, I don't have to be the one closing the deals. I don't have to be the one, you know, you know, being that, that athlete, the one getting the credit for it. What I could do is find a way to duplicate what I'm doing and help other agents. And that means we can help more clients and families. Right. And that was a huge mind shift because I wanted to, you know, again, I didn't play, you know, I didn't play team sports guys. I only played like individual sports. And this is why I liked real estate and mortgages because I treated it like an individual sport, right? As much work I put into it was the result I'm going to get out of it. If I didn't work, I didn't get paid, right? If I worked a lot, if I worked 12 hour days, I'm going to close more deals. Yeah. So again, I think that was for me, I don't remember how long ago that was, but that was, and he, you know, he's basically said, I'm going to pull you out of production. It was so foreign, so foreign to me to hear that. And, you know, and I want you guys to understand that because this might be foreign for you right now, but maybe this isn't the decision you're making right now, but Enrique is planting that seed so that you start looking, hey, I'm going to implement one or two little things into my daily routine or my monthly routine to go ahead and start, start looking at what I'm going to be at in five years. Yeah. Right. And, and like to add to that, if you don't have like a roadmap of where you're trying to go or even a destination that you're trying to reach, right? And the destination may change over time. But if I don't have like, hey, I'm trying to get over there, right? Then how do I know like what direction I got to go in, right? Some of us are just driving the car, but we don't know where we're going. And we're driving the car and we're cruising the streets, right? You know, and the car's moving, you know, which is you're closing deals and stuff. But do I really know where I'm going? Is the next is the question, right? Where am I driving to? Have I thought about that, right? So this is the challenge for you guys at this stage in your career. And as you continue to mature in your career is where am I going, right? Now, I want you guys to start looking at the business in these few ways. So this leads us to the next. Um, and this was also, it's very simple, but it was a mindset shift for me as well. Is I started, I, Lars, our coach, right? We, we spent five years in coaching, just FYI. I probably invested 200 grand with Lars, right? Over, over that five-year period. One-on-ones, coaching sessions, seminars, all kinds of stuff. Um, but he, he made it really simple. Is we got to look at our, our business as like categories, right? different categories that make the business run, right? And the first one is attract. You guys may have heard me say this, attract. And attract is basically, how do you get leads, right? Everyone's in the attraction phase. That's the first step of the whole process that we're trying to do, is we are trying to get people to come to us that say, hey, I want to buy or I want to sell or I want to refinance or I want to loan, whatever it might be right? That's the attraction phase. And what happens is most people spend, like the majority of agents who don't really look at this as a business, they spend most of their time in the attract phase. They're always chasing the next lead, the next opportunity. They put so much emphasis on like, I need to get more leads, I need to get more clients, I need to get more deals, right? It's in the attract phase. And it is important. It is part of the big picture, but it's not the only part of the big picture, right? There's, there's multiple parts. So attract, these are the questions you got to start asking yourself is how do I get leads, right? And you guys, you know, feel free to take notes or I'll give you guys this worksheet and you can fill it out later, but start thinking of my business in terms of how do I get leads? What is my marketing plan to generate, right? Is there an actual plan or is it just like, Hey, uh, I'm part of PRG and like they give me flex leads and that's my plan. Like just take the leads, right? Maybe that's part of the plan, but it can't be the only part of the plan because you're not in control of that right? You're not, we're not in control of how many leads Zillow gives us, right? We're at the mercy of, of them. Um, and even for us, it's only part of the plan. What are my top three lead sources that you are committed to mastering? If you only have one lead source, guys, you're going to be left in the dark because as when the market changes, certain lead sources are more powerful than others. Um, and we've, we've seen that, right? Like, if your business is built off calling uh, expireds and FISBOs, and then we're in like a, a crazy seller market where every single property is selling in one week, 
there aren't expires and FISBOs to call. And there are agents who built their business off of expires and FISBOs. And then when the market changed, they had no one to call and they never built any other skills or had any other leads coming in, right? That's a good example. If, you, if your only pillar is Zillow leads and Zillow all of a sudden says, hey guys, we're no longer doing Zillow Flex. Like we're changing the whole program. Like, sorry, like this is a money move for us. And that was the only way you were getting leads. And what happens to your business? You're out, right? Um, if your business is only seller leads, right? You're only going after listings and listings are scarce because no one's selling. That's a problem too, right? That could be a problem as well. Um, if you were only doing refis, right? We experienced this when the rates went up. Like if your business was heavy refi and you weren't doing purchase business and all of a sudden the rates went up, what happened to refis? Uh, all gone, right? So that, that just proves right there, multiple examples that will probably hit, you know, with, with all you guys that we can't just have one lead source. We have to have at least three, right? The best players out there, the biggest businesses out there, they have three, four, maybe five. They have multiple lead sources, right? They might have their top three where they just go super deep on and they have a couple other ones that trickle in. But my advice is always have a solid three that you're putting in constant effort and you are committed to mastery, right? Zillow Flex could be one of them. Listings could be one of them. But what are your other two, right? And what are you going to become the, the king or the, the queen at um, for that lead source, right? And then are you building a brand in the process? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Can, can I go back just really quick? Yes. It, I really want to, I, I think it's really important to understand this because we've made mistakes in, in this area of attract. Uh, where we went after too many lead sources, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and, and so what I just want to, what I really want to emphasize when Ricky is going over, he's saying pick three. And what I, when we pick three, that means we're committed to those three. We go all in on those three, right? Mm -hmm. And, and that, this is a, probably a whole other separate training. Yeah. But I want us to think of those three and then book a one-on-one -on -one with Enrique or myself so then we can figure out how to go so deep and hold each other accountable to those three. Right. Yeah, or if you don't book a one-on-one, -on -one, like it's easy to do research now. Like everything yeah. is out there on YouTube, guys. If you want to be the king of farming, like there's ways to figure that out, right? It's no longer reliant on Enrique and Jason teaching you. Of course, we're here to teach you, but I also don't want to stop you from doing your own yeah. research, right? Um, but the whole point is you need to pick. You need to pick three and you need to go all in with those three. And when you pick three, it's almost like getting married and you're picking a husband or a wife. You're not picking anybody else after that. Yep. You're saying no to the DMs. You're saying no to everyone else, right? To, to any other distractions, right? Out there. Same thing with your lead sources, right? If you're picking these three and you're going all in, it requires you to say no to the others, right? And that, that, that becomes discipline. The agents that fumble a lot in our business are the ones that are constantly trying new things. They're always trying something else. Like I started farming, I did it for three months, it didn't work. So then I did this other thing. I paid this one lead source, I did this online thing. And then like, none of them work because you didn't go deep at any. And, and yeah, and I think the common thing to we get from that is it didn't work, right? And, and I gotta, you gotta have to understand it didn't work because you didn't work it. Yeah. You didn't work it. And I'm not saying you guys, I'm just saying in general, when we hear these Agent. things, we hear these things, it didn't work, it's like, no, you didn't work. You didn't go deep enough in it because any pretty much anything will work, guys. If you go a million percent deep into it, it will. Right? It's just if you want, yeah. So whatever you know, works, works yeah. right? Whatever you work works, right? Like the grass is not greener on the other side. It's green where you water it, right? So if you put that time and effort and energy into dominating that lead source and becoming the king of it um, or the queen of it, it's gonna work, mm -hmm. right? It's gonna work and. What happens is you build momentum and you start, it starts getting easier over time, right. right? But you need to have three. So those of you guys that only have one or two, um, you need to think about that, right? Am I, am I one track minded, right? Because that, be, that can hurt you in the long run as well. Um, one of those three should be your SOI and your database. So let me rephrase that. Your SOI or your database should be one of them and then you should have two more that feed the SOI and database, right? Um, which totals three, basically. 
And are you building a brand in the process, right? So as I'm out there, you know, doing all this effort to attract leads and, and, and bring business in, am I building something that's also going to last beyond that, right? To where it gets easier, right? So you have to think about building your brand in the process. And that comes with marketing, that comes with social media content, that comes with staying in touch with your past clients, that comes with, you know, doing different things that are going to separate you and uh, legitimize you as the, the person in business, right? Otherwise, you're just like any other agent. And most agents right now are just like any other agent, to be honest, right? right? The majority of, of the agents out there do not think about building a brand at all, right? Um, why do they not think about building a brand? Because it's not something you can touch or feel, right? It's really hard to like, it's, it's a long game, right? Yeah. And everyone's looking for the immediate results, yeah. right? They're looking for- the Six minute apps. The six minute apps, no. It's like, it's not six minute abs. It's building a lifestyle of, be, of being healthy and going to the gym all the time and eating right. That's a lifestyle that you create. It's the same thing with your brand. It isn't I post on social media one time if that's what you're doing. It's no, part of my brand is I promote myself on social media and there's certain days I put myself out there this many times per month, this many times per year. There's ways that I follow up on that. Like it's a whole thought out process of this is my long-term game plan to build my brand, right? So I'm going to stop right there because this is a lot, guys. And um, remember, this isn't something you're going to grasp overnight. It's to get you to start thinking of these things. And when you start asking yourself the right questions, then you start finding the right answers, right? Does anybody have a question on attract and what attract is all about? <laughs> my, my eyes are bad. <laughs> okay, we're good. All right. So after attract, guys, what's the next step? Anybody know? After you attract leads, what comes next in the big picture of the business? It starts with a C. Closing. Close, close, close. Conversion. Ah, yeah. Convert, convert. Yeah, close either convert. Yeah, and then we say conversion. Yeah, that's what it is, guys. Right, right. Like step one is you attract people into your into your world, right? You get people to come check you out or see what you're all about or your offer your services. Step two is conversion, right? You can slice it or dice it any way, but whatever <laughs> freaking lead source you're doing, doesn't matter how you're getting your leads, you gotta convert them, right? You got to get leads to come in and then you got to freaking convert them to work with you, right? You got to get them to sign up or make a commitment to work with you. So the question you got to start thinking of or the things you got to think of is what is your proven process for converting leads to clients? Is there a process that I have, right? You have to think in terms of systems and processes. The, some of the systems that we already have here at the office is we have our buyer system, right? Where we do a buyer consultation, we go through the whole presentation and we get them to sign a loyalty agreement. That is a system. That is part of how we convert buyers at a high level, right? And we've seen it used hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of times at this point where it's something you can duplicate over and over, right? You're not like, just because you're my friend, I'm doing it a different way. Or just because you're my cousin, just because you're smarter, I'm doing it a different way. No. It's when you, if you're a buyer, you come in this way and you go through this process, right? And then you have our listing process, right? Where there's a whole uh, different steps involved in how I'm going to convert a listing, right? From going out, doing the consultation, touring the property, doing the listing presentation, um, whatever your follow-up process may be. But you got to start thinking in terms of where are the holes in my system, right? right? This is the question I would always ask myself is, okay, this is what I'm doing so far, but where are the holes in this, right? If I had to pick this thing apart, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do something completely different, right? If it's already working, I start seeing where can I do it better, mm -hmm. right? Like maybe um, my buyer presentation needs to be tweaked a little bit, right? Like it's got me this far, but if I wanted to make it better, I gotta change page eight and you know, whatever it might be, right? Yeah. Same thing with my listing process, right? Um, and I need to make sure I'm doing it the same way every single time from when I book the appointment, am I sending a video out 
Am I adding them on a Zoom? Am I sending a calendar invite? Am I doing a notification? Like these are all steps you actually need to write out. And so no matter who you meet with, they go through every single step in the process because you know that ensures the highest level of conversion. Let me jump in. Yes. So, so one thing that really stands out, guys, when, when I look at, you know, these systems that we're building and that we're implementing is I feel a lot of times, you know, we get comfortable not doing all these steps, right? So I think it's important for you to, when Enrique, I like what Enrique said, you're writing down these steps and then you got to, you got to put in, I am committed to doing every one of these steps, right? You know, we, we had this coaching call and it, it talked about it being like, it does take all that. Right. It does take all that to convert these these clients. And what I mean by that is a lot of times you may see a system and you're like, eh, well, you know, I'm only going to do there's 10 things. I'm only going to do seven of them. Right. But then you're not you're not taking the system on head on. Right. You're you're now you're 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 shying away from the things that that you're not comfortable doing. But if you're to do those extra three, three things, your conversion rates will definitely go up. Right. So I really I really want you to understand that. Is that is that you have to not because again I, I know you guys do with our system. Raise your hand if, if you guys see the systems that that Enrique and I have built, and you're like, well, you know what, I like that, but I'm only going to do this part of it. Raise your hand if that that happens, guys. Uh -huh. Right? No one else. No one in the room. There, everyone gets my buyer buyer loyalty agreement. It's not right. It's a buyer loyalty agreement. Sign oh, if you don't do it. Yeah. Oh. Right. I, I got the analogy, man. It's like trying to make a cake and not use all the right ingredients, man. You know, I know. There, you there you go. There you go. Okay. You can't said. make a cake without without an egg. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh you can try to figure it out without an egg, but it doesn't taste this good, right? Like that's the thing. And and what we're going for, guys, here's the thing is what we're going for to piggyback off Jason is we're going for a duplicatable process, right? right? When you go to McDonald's and you order a cheeseburger, it always got pickles. You can't. It has always two got pickles. pickles. It has the onions are finely chopped. It has the ketchup. It has this. They don't do it different every time unless you request it, right? They sell millions of hamburgers a day throughout the world, right? Imagine if they were winging it every single time. Right. Imagine if they're like, I'm going to cook it a little bit longer this time. or that. You can't duplicate that, right? It does take all that. So, and it does take all that, right? Because what you want to do is you want to become known for delivering a certain level of service throughout your process as well, right? And when you're constantly changing how you do things and what you do, and you're not baking the cake with all the ingredients, then your clients get a different experience every single time, right? So the question you got to ask yourself through this is, am I actually following the system to the T, right? Am I committed? Am I committed to following the system? Do I understand why I need to follow it the same way every single time? Do I understand, remember, this is titled the big picture of the business. Do I understand that in the long run, if I do it the same way every single time, it's going to ultimately lead to more conversion, right? And it's not just the tract, right? It doesn't matter how many leads you get. It's the conversion that matters, right? And when your conversion is top tier, you don't need as many leads, Right. If it takes Rob 20 appointments to close one deal, but then his conversion goes up and it only takes him 10 appointments to close one deal, that's a, you know, he doubled his conversion rate, right? It's called the efficiency and it's duplicatable, right? You're not trying to reinvent the wheel every single time. Um, the next part, how do you increase your conversion is your sales skills, right? And this is where training comes into play. And this is the question when you got to start asking yourself, like, am I really, really skilled when I meet with the client? And if I know I'm not, but I'm still going out there meeting with clients and I'm not showing up to training or I'm not making time in my week to train and learn and practice and rehearse and, and you know, role play, am I really going to convert at the highest level possible, right? And this is why we do so much training. But some people get to, especially the, in this group right here, we get to a point where we close deals and we think we got it all down, right? At this point in my career, guys, like 20 years in the game, I can say I'm probably one of the best converters in this room. Mm -hmm. I, one of them, one of them, right? So one of them, right? Chase is pretty good. You know, I compete with some of the best. Let me just say that, right? <laughs> but, but, but here's the thing. I still do not think I am the best converter out of everybody. I still think I need to improve. I still see the value in me 
going to a training that's going to teach me how to convert at a high at a higher level, right? And, and real quick, real yeah. quick, I don't mean to jump in, but I think again, okay, guys, there's to me, it's it's definitely again the conversion, but in this in this market in this industry, it is you have to be training all the time because the market Much changes, change, yeah. the clients change, the the products change. So so again, it's not even even if you're the best converter. That that's awesome, yeah. but you don't know. You need to know what's going. You need to have a pulse on the market, right? And that's why this is huge. And and, and again, I, I I'm looking at how much training we have, and I know some of my agents are like, shit, man, we're always in a training. But it's like th this is what's going to separate us from from the rest of the rest of the team. I, I see people post right now, and they're behind. They're talking about, oh shit, the market's changing. I'm like, Mark, we've been talking about this four weeks ago. Yeah. Right. And, and again, but you have to be in these trainings. So I think it's important that we, we really understand that we take the time to build these skills. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Training and then industry knowledge. Right. So sales skills is one thing. Right. Learning how to talk to people, how to say the right things, how to you know persuade people to move in the direction you want them to move into. That's a whole skill in itself. Right. Um, which Rob puts Rob studies that a lot. Right. And you see, like, he's constantly closing listings now because he's putting a lot of energy and effort into his sales skills and his conversion, right, with, with listings. Um, and then knowledge, right? The, what other knowledge can you learn in the industry that is going to make you a more valuable agent or loan officer when you're showing up with clients? And the, the big thing, guys, is all of your industry knowledge shouldn't come from PRG. That's one thing I want to I wanna stress because sometimes we think like we're supposed to provide all the answers for you. Yeah. No, right? Like we don't know everything, right? We know a lot. Any place you go to doesn't know everything. Like that's why I'm constantly in, in training. That's why I'm in mastermind. That's why I'm out there. That's why I'm on the Monday mastermind every freaking week with, with EXP with 500 agents across the U.S., and listen to podcasts. And listen to podcasts. Audio books. I'm doing. I'm jumping on a training after this. There's a presentation of Dan Beer on his whole marketing system. That's what I'm doing after this, right? Um, because even though like we're closing deals, I want to get to the next level, right? Like it's 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 what's required. So I want to emphasize that you need to improve your sales skills. You need to show up. You need to learn more products. You need to learn about the inventory. You need to learn about different types of properties. You need to learn. You need to ask yourself, what don't I know in my business? Yeah, Not what do I know, what don't I? Know? That's a great question. If I were to meet a client, they threw me this question, and I don't at least have a general knowledge of it, how am I going to look, right? Yeah. So what don't I know? And you're slowly adding to your tool belt over time, over time. You're not going to learn it all in a day, right? Slowly adding. You guys used to call me freaking uh, um, Geekipedia. Geekipedia. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They used to make a joke. They used to call me Geekipedia because every time they had a question, they'd ask, yeah. they'd ask me, right? After a while, I'm like, dude, don't ask me, bro. Don't ask Google, right? Like, <laughs> go figure it out for yourself because that's how you learn. If I'm always giving you the answer and you're not going and learning for yourself, I'm not helping you grow, right? And it was a funny joke, and you know, but it's true, right? It's, yeah. it's, you got to go out there and learn. Um, any questions on convert, guys? Good. How do you change it? Convert? Conversion? Conversion. Convergent. 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 Okay. Attract, convert. What's the next one, guys? What's the next step in the game? You attract the lead, you come in, you do a great job, you get them to sign up and move forward with you. What is the next crucial step in the process? Just like you say. That's okay. Uh, attract. Is it, a, is it another one word? One word. Okay. So Starts with the D. Starts with the D. No, I duplicate. No. Well, that's a good one. Uh, she already saw it. Deliver. 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 deliver, right? Attract, yeah. convert, deliver, right? Delivery. You've got to deliver on what you promise, right? If you told someone you were going to do a great job for them, uh, if you told someone you were going to sell their house for top dollar, if you told them you were going to give them five star service, right? That's what you promised them in your presentation. Are you delivering on your promise, right? And how do you deliver at the highest level possible? So the questions you got to start asking yourself is, what is my process for delivering high-level service that is consistent and duplicatable? 
Those are the two key words, consistent and duplicatable. It isn't like I helped Rob, Rob's my client, I did a kick-ass job. How do I do that over and over and over and over at the same level and the same standard, right? Like not I did a great job for this one, but this one I didn't really put a lot of effort in, right? That becomes the question because it's like going back to McDonald's, right? You can now go to any McDonald's in the world and you know if you order a Happy Meal, it's going to look a certain way. They're going to say a certain thing. You got to drive up to the first window. You then get to the second window. You already know that you can count on McDonald's being McDonald's every single time, mm -hmm. right? You already know at Nordstrom, any of you guys shop at Nordstrom, what happens when you pay for your clothes? What do they do? They walk around. Oh, they walk around. Hand you the bag. They walk around and they hand you the bag. Anybody been to Nordstrom that bought something, right? Do you know that's part of their, their service, their, their SOP, Standard Operating Procedure? Mm -hmm. There's a reason they do that because they wanted to differentiate themselves from Macy's or anywhere else. Did you know that Nordstrom lets you return anything, even if you already wore it, right? Some of you guys may know that, some of you guys may not, right? Um, I'll tell you a story. I had, I went and bought like a, a coat one time at Nordstrom in the, you know, suit department. And the guy like gave me this wow service, right? He was with me, helped me try the stuff on. He was like telling me what looks good, what doesn't, what fit my body, body style and everything. Help me pick out a bell because I was going to some event or something. And then um, what happened, I got a tailor, right? He brought the tailor down, got it tailored. And for some reason or another, after I got my coat, they forgot to give me my belt, right? They forgot to give me my belt. And I called, I talked to the guy. I'm like, hey, where's my belt? It wasn't in the bag. He's like, oh, they forgot to put it in there. He's like, where do you work at, right? Give him our address. He left Nordstrom, drove to our office and dropped the bell off, right? Is that service, right? The guy dropped the bell. He's like, hey, no problem. It was my bad, right? Here's your thing. Hey, if you ever need anything, come find me. And then every time I would go back to Nordstrom, I'd always ask for that same dude, right? I just don't really shop at Nordstrom anymore. It's <laughs> expensive, right? <laughs> but it's the same thing, right? It's like, how do I give, deliver high-level service that is consistent and duplicatable? That guy may say, this is how I treat my clients. When someone works with me, I do these things, right? I go above and beyond, or these are the things I can guarantee you're going to get from me if you work with me. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you guys to really ask yourself a question right now. Is your service with your client at the highest level possible? And is it consistent and the same on every single transaction? I'm not talking about the deal goes sideways. I'm talking about the things that you do in your transaction. You guys are all grinning, right? Because it's not, mm -hmm. right? Um, say, say that one more time. Say it again. I missed it. Every single client you work with, are you delivering the highest level of service possible? And is it the same across the board? Like if you help this client and you help this client, are they getting the same royal treatment every single time? No. Sometimes we have clients we want to avoid, right? Like, oh, shit, shit's going wrong. I'm not going to call them. I'm trying to not answer their call, right? We all, we've all been there, but we need to think of our business in a different way, right? We need to think of no matter what is going on, I deliver this level of service. And, and really quick, guys, I think this also applies to Enrique and I, right? If we take it as these new agents are our clients, we got to hold ourselves to these same standards. Yeah. So we're in the trenches and doing these same concepts that we're, that he's rolling out with you guys right now, Right. Yeah. So I, I think it's important to understand that we're not just preaching it, that we're also in, we're in the process of practicing it on yeah. a daily basis. And let me set this straight. Like no one is hundred percent perfect, right? You're never going to bat a hundred, but you should strive mm -hmm. to hit all the checkpoints, right? On every single one. And then the second question you got to ask is who is handling that, right? Because remember, if you're trying to do this at the highest level possible and you're trying to do it by yourself, that's really hard to do. Maybe you could do it with a handful of clients, but if I want to go from 10 deals a year to 30 deals a year and still de deliver the consistent service and all those checkpoints, now that becomes an issue, right? In my business where, damn, I just don't have time to do it all, right? Like if I'm trying to deliver this, this 10 point system, right? Where I check off every point for every client and I have so many things going on, it's hard. So that's where leverage comes into play. That's where you got to ask yourself, who's handling that, right? Are you utilizing our admin team at the highest level? Are you utilizing 
the transaction coordinators? Are you at the point in your career when you need to hire an assistant or you need a virtual assistant to help you take on some of those things? Some of you guys are not. Some of you guys still need to go through the process and get yourself up to a certain production level. And there's some of you guys that are producing at a high enough level where you now need to add people to the mix to keep that quality as high as possible. All right. Um, the next question is, do I have a checklist that ensures the same process every single time, right? Because it's one thing to say, I'm going to deliver service. Like, yeah, I'm going to treat all my buyers this way. This is, these are the things I'm going to do. But do you actually have a checklist? The same way that a pilot goes in and drives an airplane, right? They have a certain checklist. They have a board and they have to check every single thing off. Check this thing, check this thing, check that thing. That's how you need to run your business because that's the only way that you can ensure consistency throughout the process, right? You can't, you're not going to be responsible at the end of the day for like what the market is doing, how your clients respond, you know, things that come up in the transaction. Those are things that are out of our control, but you can be responsible. Did I hit all of these things that I said I was going to do? Right. Right. So it, a great practice, you know, and some of you guys, what I want you guys to start as I'm going through this, I want you guys to think like, where do I need to focus on, right? Maybe these two are going great, but yeah, my delivery sucks, right? If I have to be honest, right? So that's why I need to spend time, on, right? But back to the beginning of why do we do this? It's going to help you answer some of those questions, right? Of what do I got to focus on and what direction do I got to go? Um, now you may say, well, hey, I know Andrea and Alicia handle these certain things and Melissa handles this, but as part of when you work with Anna, you're going to get these other five things that I do for every single client in addition to what's already being done by, by the admin team, right? What's your signature thing, right? Maybe you show up with flowers at their job. Maybe you send them a cake. Maybe you do balloons at your closings. Maybe every week you call and there's you call it a certain thing. This is the Anna check-in, right? Every Friday. And this is what I do because, you know, I guarantee when I meet with you, this is what I promised you I was going to do, right? Maybe if, if you're doing listings, maybe there's a certain way in which you check in with people or a certain schedule you follow, right? But it has to be systematized. Yeah, right? and I love what Eureka's saying. You know, like you're naming it, you're putting a theme behind it. And and look at places you've been to. Enrique gave us an example of, of Nordstrom. I'll give you the example of the double tree, right? What did the double tree give you when you check in? They give you warm cookies, right? And these, oh, are, yeah. these are things that you can remember these things, right? So you want to make sure that your client remembers you for the good things, not bad things, but for good things. Yeah. So just maybe coming up with something that you can put a theme on when you work with and when you work with Rudy, this is what happens. When you write, I think it's important to just break it. It has to be, it doesn't have to be something extravagant. It's something yeah. very basic. Start with basics, right? You can have a, a five-point checklist, right? Hey, every client that works with me, they get this, they get that, they get that, they get that. That's where I'm going to start. Because if you try to do 100 things, we already know what happens, right? The same thing like when people try to, like, they don't go to the gym at all, and then all of a sudden they're doing no carbs, and they're going to the gym six times a week, and they're waking up at 4 a.m., and you're going from nothing to, like, this extreme case, it's really hard to stick to that, right? But if you're like, hey, I'm going to start at the basic level where I'm, this is my five-point thing that I'm doing, and I have a, every time I have a file, I create a document. And I say, all right, client, you know, John Smith, and I have my checklist and I have a date when I did it and I completed it. By. And when I pitched my services to in the, in the conversion phase, I promised John that I was going to do these five things, right? And now I'm delivering. And then you start becoming known for this is part of who I am. This is my identity in my business. This is part of my brand. This is my signature move that I do. And I think it, it elevates you. Oh, yeah. Your, it elevates you from a freaking normal agent to like you're yeah. someone that runs a legitimate business that operates off systems and procedures and processes. Right? I think you also for yourself, you start setting that standard for yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and it just becomes natural. That's who I am. That's how I'm going to deliver. Yeah. Right. I think it's important to understand that it, it slowly just becomes you. Because the opposite is default. Right. Like. I'm going to try my best. And we all try our best with what we got, right? You know, but that's not consistent, right? Our best is not always consistent because there's a million things going on. But when you have a checklist that you can go through, that creates the consistency. Yeah. So just so you guys know, on the back end with our admin team, they have a checklist for everything that they do in the contract to close phase. So when they get a lead, 
there's a certain checklist. I got to enter it in Sisu. I got to send out this welcome email. I got to send an email to Melissa. I got to plug it in over here. Like they follow an exact checklist that they got to do every single time, right? Um, but you guys on the front end, you need to add your own touches, your own flavor. That's just going to enhance and take it to the next level. That's what you're in control of. Um, what do I need to do? What do I need to add to this process, right? Is what we're talking about to increase my level of service. And then the goal, guys, is that you're delivering such an awesome experience that you are getting five-star reviews on every single client. And that's the next question. Are you getting five-star reviews from every single client that you work with? Or are you leaving it up to them to leave you the five-star review if they feel like it? Two different things, right? One of them is intentional, where it's like, hey, Mr. Client, you know, in my conversion, you know, this is the things I do. If I deliver great service, I just want to make sure you're going to leave me a five-star review because that's my goal in this whole entire transaction. Are you in agreement where if I do my job, I do a great service, you agree to give me a five-star review? Versus I did a great job at the end. Hey, would you mind leaving me a review? That's it. Two different ways, right? One way is this is the way I do business and this is part of my offering. The other way is, can you do me a favor, basically, right? You can't build your business and create consistency and uh, duplicate the process if it's just all about favors or if it feels right. It has to be a process. Now, am I getting referrals from every single client, right? We get referrals from clients, but I would say for 99% of the referrals that we get, it's because it was by luck. Right, you did a good job. Client liked you. Maybe you stayed in touch, and then the client says, "Hey, by the way, I have someone that wants to buy or sell. Can you help them?" But there was no intention or process or system built around that, where I'm consistently asking for referrals, right? Or I'm setting the expectation again, like in, in the conversion. Hey, my job is at the end, you give me a five star review, and you are comfortable giving me a referral, a name and number of someone you think I can help. If I do a great job, would you be willing to do that? And that becomes part of your process and your system, right? And then you know that every client you help, you do a great job and you're going to get at least one or two referrals from that client because that's how you're building your business, right? It's a process. Um, and then the last thing, right? Is there a process to ensure this, which is basically what I'm talking about. It isn't like by winging it or default, have I actually outlined? Did I create a document that, sh that says my guarantee or my promise to you, right? I know that's something that Lars... Would, would use is they would call it um, HPRA or that's the name of their company. Um, let's say PRG, the PRG promise, right? Mm -hmm. And they would add that into their presentation. When you work with us, we promise to do boom, 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 right? And they would list them all out. In return, if we are able to deliver and you feel we did a great job, you know, we would, we would want you to be in agreement to give us a five-star review and refer us somebody else that we can help, right? And that's part of their presentation. That's part of their buyer presentation, part of their listing presentation on every single one. And they were able to do that. And slowly they were able to scale to where now pretty much all their business comes from referrals and past months, right? They were doing paid leads and online leads and stuff for a long time. And he slow, he used those to, to build the database. Yeah. And then he slowly funneled those out where now he doesn't do any online leads. It's all referral based, right? It's just large. Large, yeah. Um, but that took time, right? Didn't happen overnight. So you guys right now, those of you guys that are getting online leads or whatever it might be, you're in the position to start building it right now so that in two years from now, three years from now, you close enough online leads where your database is this big and it's pumping out referrals, right? That's the long-term game plan, Yeah. right? The long-term game plan is you use those to build your business and then you get a referral-based business. And you'll meet maybe some agents that are in the industry that have been doing it for a long time where all their business is referrals. But it's because over time they built that, right? Uh, I know this is a lot, guys. We're almost wrapping it's up. Good. It's a lot. It is a lot to you, but it's good. I mean, we can break each one of these down and have an hour training. So I have some other stuff. I'm not going to go into it too much. I think, I, I think this is enough for today. There's some other pieces of this. Um, and we'll pick up on the next one, the other pieces. But what I want to do quickly, guys, is spend just five minutes. If you guys give me five more minutes, 
I want you guys to maybe give me some feedback on what part of this stood out to you. What part of this like spoke to you like, all right, I need to step it up in that, right? Attract, convert, deliver. Is there any specific part of that that you see where there's a potential hole in your business or an area for improvement? For me personally, like getting my flyers um, done, I'm always back to that, but I have been working on besides Zillow Flex having like other avenues. Um, and one of them again was the farming and I've been doing it for four months, which I'm pretty proud of. Like, are the flyers the best? No, but they have the information. But my thing is I want to be able to delegate the flyer being you know, done to someone, you know, I would just like to outsource that. I did look into like virtual assistant today at 10 o'clock or had an appointment. So I like more information on that. See what support we could get for the flyers, I guess. I don't know. Okay. So let's, let's go like bigger picture, right? So for what I'm hearing is for you, it's more of identifying a pillar, right? Or a lead source. And making it happen and like getting it going and it being consistent. Okay. So that's in the attract attract phase right is one of the sources is farming or flyers right to a certain neighborhood and that's something that you need to commit to mastering right or building a system around that to make sure it happens consistently right okay so that's a, that's that's a great area to work in right and i would say before you even just say flyers i think going the step before that is what are my three lead sources that i'm committed to Right. And that's something that would be a great use of your time is to really sit down and analyze it from different areas. Like not just what what do I want to do? What am I committed to doing on a daily basis? Because sometimes like we see something and we want to be that person, but maybe that's not in line with who we are or what we're willing to do. Right. So I think that's also important is what are you good at? What's something that, you know, you'll do? Um, and, and I think not what sounds good, right? Yeah, and I think a lot, sometimes it's even when, what can I control when I choose that, yeah. right? And, and again, I think Enrique kind of laid something out for us early on this attract stage where it's SOI, right? That's going to be one of your pillars. And then now for Diana, it sounds like you want to do farming. So that's a second pillar, right? right. Um, and, and I think, yeah, it's just finding what, what, like, what you're going to commit to. And then what you're going to go all in with, I think yeah. it's important to understand and then, that. And then going deeper with it, right, Diana, is how many homes am I going to farm? How often? How many flyers do I need to send out? Um, who's going to answer the phone calls? What's the process when I get one of those leads? What am I doing with it to ensure the highest level of conversion, right? So because just saying farming, like that's really surface level. I would encourage you to go really deep with it and break down every single step of the process for that particular lead source. Well, I feel like I feel comfortable in a sense, like with the system that you guys have provided. So getting the lead and plugging them in that I'm, I feel good. You know, I'm ready to utilize those systems. I kind of learned them, you know, early on, obviously I have to, you know, increase my numbers or whatever, but the three pillars are like Zillow Flex and then me farming. And then um, because I do want to become more of a listing, right? And I want to be able to do both, but I want to focus on listings in my area. That's okay. My so homework for you, Diana, would be map that all out. Put that on paper. Put that on a spreadsheet. Put that on a checklist, right? Because you said like, hey, I could use your system and all that. That's fine. But I want you to go write that down somewhere. Um, and that becomes your manual, right? That you go back to and you make sure you're following every single step of that process, right? Whether it's you're putting in FirePoint, whatever it might be, map out the whole entire process for yourself. And then you come back to that every single time um, you work on that lead source. It's really good. Yeah. Right? And being as detailed as possible. Detailed, right? right? Like Enrique said, you know, how many flower flyers am I going to send out? When am I sending them out? Who's creating them? Who's going to answer the call? You what know. am I saying on the call? What's the objective of the call? Uh, what do I do with that lead if they say, I don't want to talk to you right now or I'm just looking? What's the follow-up plan for that lead, right? Am I sending them videos? Am I not? Am I showing up at their house? Am I door knocking them? Like there's right, like this is now going deep with it, right? And, and then once you do all that, then you got to look at that and you say, is this something I'm willing to commit to, right? Because sometimes after we look at it, you're like, yeah, it's, 
a lot of steps, right? But but it's only when you do that that you'll be able, be able to truly maximize the return on investment, right? If you're spending X amount of dollars every month on that on that lead source, but you're not doing all those things, you're gonna end up just burning money, right? On whatever that costs. And it applies for any other lead source that, that we're doing. I mean, um, yeah, and really just, just get some more feedback, guys, because I wanna yeah. wrap this up real quick. Anybody else feedback? What stood out to you from this? Uh, any specifics, attract, convert, or deliver, or any things that resonate with you? For me, it's how to convert because I feel like you can call a lot, you can cold call, you can um, do a bunch of online leads, but if you don't know how to convert them, like you're not going to get anywhere. And that's the that's kind of what I have. Like, I I can convert online leads, but I want to be able to convert like maybe like door knocking leads or like more SOI leads. I think I need like a system on how to convert different types of leads because I think they're different in a way. Okay. Um, so homework for you would be to really explore that, right? Like you got to be specific to the lead source as well because every lead source is going to be different. But if it's online leads, right? You can easily Google or we could book a one on one or you could each just start mapping out a game plan of this is what I'm going to commit to for that lead source. The same kind of similar thing with with what I told Diana, because um, that what you told me, that was like three different things. You said online leads and you said SOI then you said was it listings um, door knocking, door knocking. Right. Three different strategies, three different lead sources, three different processes. Right. Because you're meeting people in different ways. So. Mm -hmm. I think it's it'd be a really good exercise for you to organize all that, put it all down. And then um, once you have that, then you can build off that. We could train on that. You can look at Yeah, that. because each one of those is going to come with a slightly different way of how to convert. Yep. Right. The process in converting with door knocking is going to be different than you know one of those other your SOI maybe. So so just just making sure that you understand that and then come in with that system. And then the other thing to add to that, Lily, and for everyone listening, is understanding the conversion timeline for different lead sources, because that's something that a lot of times we don't take into account, right? We we see like, hey, I want to I want to close more SOI leads, right? But SOI leads, depending on how you're marketing to them, that could be like a long drawn out process, right? Where like you might get your cousin who's interested in buying a home, but you talk to him today and he's not ready for six months or a year, right? That's a whole process in its own. A door knocking lead, right? If you're just farming in a cold neighborhood where you're just circle prospecting or just sending a bunch of flyers and you meet someone today, like there's not, a, there's chances are they may not be ready to sell for a while. I mean, I mean, that, I mean, again, just that's what David said. He said he started in February, yeah. first deal in August. He spent three or four grand a month up until that time before he converted. Yeah. Right. And that was that was someone from List Pros that came in and gave us that feedback on the farming. And then even with Zillow Flex, too. Right. If you're getting online leads, putting that down. Right. If I get a lead today, how long does it take to convert that? Right. How many leads do I need to get before I convert one? What's my conversion rate? Right. What's the return on investment and my time as well? Uh, all right. Let's go one more. One more. What stood out to you guys? One more. We're done. In this whole process, attract, convert, deliver. I think the deliver part for me uh, is I got the five star, no, the, the, the five star service, right? I think there's certain things that I can add to my process to make that up front to make it a great experience. Um, I've been spoiled where I could just hand things off to the girls and the girls hand it, do everything for me. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe adding some extra things in the beginning on the front end is what I have to kind of focus on. Got it. That, 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 that kind of rung out to me. I think a good exercise for you, Rob, is to get with the with the girls, right? Because that's fine. If you want to leverage the admin team, that, that's why the admin team's there, right? right? It's like, instead of you going and hiring your own assistant, it's, it's a built-in assistant that handles certain things for you. Mm -hmm. So you should be use, utilizing the admins at the highest level. But what I would encourage you to do is to talk with them and put this on paper. What is their process that they follow? And then you look at that and say, okay, is there anything Rob wants to add to this? And then you build your own checklist, right? With yeah. all their stuff and your stuff. And then you manage that checklist, right? Right. right? right. Whereas you make sure everything gets checked off. Mm. Okay. Right. And then maybe there's like, maybe 90% of the stuff the admin team is doing for you. And 
Ten percent are things that you actually have. All right, right, right. But that's a system, right? That's right. a system right there. We're like, hey, our admin team doesn't normally do this, but I want to make sure you know my client gets a call every Wednesday, right? right. So I'm going to add in the call every Wednesday. Right. Or I want to make sure my client gets balloons at the end. I know that's not part of what we do here, but I'm going to add that, right? Mm -hmm. Um. But I think that's the way, right? Where now it's deep. Now you manage it. Now you have control. Now this is an actual business that you're running and you're leveraging the, the, the resources within right. to help make it happen, right? Right, right, right. Sometimes right. we think it has to be always us, right? But the people who run businesses at the highest level, they only do like a small portion of the business where they're the best at, right? Um, and then everything else is usually run by a team or somebody else or an assistant or something like that, right? So... All right, guys, that's all I got for today. I hope you guys got some value out of this. Um, really quick, Enrique, I, I think, guys, I, uh, I like to, we have this meeting, and it's great, awesome. Enrique did a lot of, spent a lot of time, you know, putting that list together. But I really, really want him to email, or we'll put it in Slack. But I want you guys to do some homework and take some action items. And immediately what comes to mind for me is identifying my three pillars of where I'm going to be attracting and then at the end, the other thing that, that comes to mind is also creating that checklist. Yeah. Those are three things in your control that you can do immediately, put pen to paper and say, okay, these are the three things I want. And these are, this is my checklist to deliver that five-star service. Yeah. Right? I, I think that's something, if not, we just had this meeting for an hour. It was great. Enrique spent an hour prepping and that was it guys. So I really, really want us to, I, I hope maybe we can even do some follow-up, maybe even in a chat, Enrique. Kind of, kind of hold yeah. them accountable to something like that. I would love for you guys to share what you're working on. Um, and then one thing that I realized is that at this point in some of your guys' career, it, it falls on you at the end of the day, right? Like the team can only get you so far, right? Like we're gonna, there's a certain you know resources that we provide, but if you want to take this to the moon, like you you got to put in the work, basically, right? You got to take ownership, in it, right? And yeah. and it that you have a sense of ownership there, right? We talked about why do you have a business, right? Ownership was the biggest one. So a good exercise, right? Kind of like to summarize what Jason said is create a spreadsheet and just put attract, convert, deliver. That's it. And you list the bullet points there of what are you currently doing in your attract, your own self-analysis? What are you doing in convert? What are you doing to deliver? And that spreadsheet is something that you just come back to every quarter. You don't need to keep reinventing the wheel. You just create one spreadsheet and you can run your business off of that forever. Right. And you'll check stuff off. You'll identify what you're, what you're working on this quarter. Right. And you break them down into quarterly rocks and you come back next quarter. Right. And you just constantly go back to that. I do that several times throughout the year where I just pick our business apart and then I figure out, okay, this is what I got to work. Even though there's 20 things I got to work on, I'm only going to pick these two or three because I can't do all 20. And then I'll come back and then I'll slowly knock them off, off my list, right? Um, and we've been doing that for years. And that's how we've gotten to the point that we're at. So if you create that, guys, share it with me. I can give you some coaching, some direction. Uh, I can see where we can help, all right? Yeah. And we'll go from there. And, and again, guys, we're never too busy for one-on-one. -on -one, so if you guys need a book of one-on-one with Enrique or myself, please do so, guys. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. Thank you so much. Be in touch. Let me know if you need anything.